Welcome to lesson 5. In this lesson I want to show you how to modify an existing library cupboard. Uh, quite often you have a, a job where um, you need a cupboard that's very close but not quite exactly matches the library item. So I'll show you how to modify this. So let's assume you're having a base unit with the left hand door. We insert the dynamic block, we change it to the size we needed. Uh, in our case, it's uh, 600 wide. 600 wide. Now we create a 3D model. Now we want to change the back here. Uh, instead of an 18 mil, it's going to be a 12 mil and it's going to run past the, the ends. So what we do first is we change, take the pick style off. Now we can select single boxes. Now we want to change the thickness of the back. So we simply click at the back and use the grips to change the thickness here. So from 18.3 we want to put it to 12. Point three. So all we need to do is change it by six millimeter. Now we can double check in properties. So we are, in this case, it's the width, but it's the thickness of the back. So that's uh, twelve point three. And uh, if we we don't really have a grain direction, so we don't really need to change the grain line, but we can move it in the right position again. Now, now we can change the power properties. So what we need to do now, uh, we just need to change the material. It's not 18 millimeter anymore. We can use our 12 millimeter internal. And as you can see, the assembly is already there. We don't need to do anything. We save this. Now we want to run this one past the ends. So again, we click on it. We bring this to that point, so the grips come in really handy. And we adjust the end depth as well. Same thing over with this corner. Now the bottom needs to be adjusted to the back. So everything touches, so we get our proper touch types here for analyzer to work. Same thing with our shelf, needs to go to that point here. And the grain line, we don't really need it as we don't have a grain direction. The next thing is the top. We want to have a full top here instead of the two top rails. So we delete the back rail. We extend the top rail to the back here. And then the other thing we need to do is change the name. We go into power properties again. And instead of a CR front, it's a top now. The material stays the same and everything stays the same here. And we also want uh, an additional shell further up that's set back by about half the cupboard. We select this, we use our normal 2D copy command, 
you select the point somewhere out here and make sure if you have our polar tracking enabled we go in the Z direction we move it up somewhere it doesn't really matter where it is just somewhere up there so there's a copy of our shell and again of course we copied that item all the power properties that come with it so we don't need to assign them again the only thing we might want to do here of course we want about I want to have it about halfway through so we put it to about 260 millimeter and we can move the grain line as well we attach it back again So that's the first modification. So just to double check if everything is alright, we can run it through Analyzer Manufacturing. You don't worry about job details at this stage. Run the geometry script. As you can see, it's done the, the small shelf there. It's drilled an additional uh, row of holes for the small shelf at the back. And uh, the back is going all the way through. The only thing we want to do, we don't want to have this back doweled on. So we have to change the part types in, in, in the part properties. So what we do here is click at our back again, power properties, our normal normal construction made this screw and dowel but we want to just screw the back on, all we need to do in a part type we can put uh, we can put the construction method screw in there we can double check this You can see the back now, instead of dowels, it is, it's just screwed, while the rest of the carcass is still a screw and dowel construction. Now we want to add a ventilation grill to the door of our cupboard. It has a cutout dimension of 225 by 96. So all we need to do is we have to draw this on the front of our door. For that we use the line command to draw some lines, such as construction lines. You want to go up 100 mil from the bottom. And since the cutout is 225 millimeter, we go to um, we go to the right at 112.5. So we keep it nice and centered. The height of the cutout is 96. The overall length again is 225. 96 down. Back to the middle. To make cutout, we want to use the solid uh, subtraction. So, but first we need to draw a box so that we can subtract this from the actual door. Now we select that point, we go roughly across that way, and we select the height, and now we just use the grips to extend the box to the right dimension. So now this is well and truly thicker than 18.3 millimeter. So now what we do is we select solid subtract, we select the door, the source item, then we press enter and we select the item to be subtracted, which is our box. Press enter again, and here's our cutout. We don't really need the lines anymore, we can delete them. So that makes the cutout a bit more visible.
Now we can double check this on analyzer manufacturing. We select the whole item here. Around the geometry script. And here is our internal cutout. We click on the line. They'll tell you the depth just to be safe. So it goes 18.5 uh, millimeter deep. Since it's a nested item, it adds 0.2 millimeter to a cut into the waste board. We can now assign our job material equivalent. So the 12 minute terminal, that's going to be white particle board, 12 millimeter. Hasn't got any edges, uh, that's just the back, so we don't worry about that. The external is for Micro Gray 18. Eighteen millimeter. And we would have gray ABS edges on that. One millimeter. Since we are running pre-milling for our etching, we don't have to worry about the thickness. The 18 millimeter internal is white particle board, 18 millimeter. And we have white edges on that. ABS, one millimeter. And the hardware, that's our hinges. Obviously, we don't need to change anything there. Okay. Now we're running our geometry script again, and the edges have changed to gray for the front and white for the carcasses. And that's basically all. It's ready for CAM.